Oh, yeah. Worked out with a dumbbell yesterday. <laughs> I feel vigorous. <laughs> if you want to get in contact with us, you can hit us up at Twitter. Or at, on Twitter. At Twitter. At Twitter on the FF Dynasty. <laughs> Swing on by at can, my Twitter. <laughs> you can find us at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can find me at IMC Myers. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. And you can maybe find Big Co. at Dynasty Big Co. Lights are off. <laughs> Lights are typically <laughs> off over there. It's not Motel 6. Curtains are shut. No. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get on to our fourth and final prospect of the day. We're going to get into a little Dante Pettis. Uh, revered as a... Solid route runner. Probably one of the better punt returners in this class, along with uh, our the guy we already talked about and Christian, Christian Kirk. Kirk. A great attribute from both of those guys, and it's really exciting to the see the punt ball. and kick returning right. is phenomenal. It's really to see the, it's fun exciting. to see the ball in those guys' hands. You feel the excitement right. in the crowd, in the air. They the can boy. go at any point in time. And the whole team knows it, so they're all blocking their ass off. It's really a fun thing to watch as far as the whole team aspect goes. Speaking of he is electric. Fun thing to watch, the video of all nine punt returns for mm. to set yeah. the career mark for the NCAA. That's a fun video. and. Casey says probably a lot when something's definitely, and he's definitely one of the best, <laughs> if not the best, kick returner. Him and Christian Kirk are leading the pack in this group. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. Saquon, uh, Rashad Penny. Yeah, they're good, but Dante Pettis is, is when it comes to actually doing those returns or is nasty. Yeah. So this guy didn't participate in the combine. I think he had a little hamstring issue or some injury. sort of a leg in injury. But, I mean, and it's, and it's kind of hard to figure out what this guy's weight and height is. Yeah, it's various discrepancies across all of the boards. Sure, there's no way he's six three. I don't think. No, I got him at either six one one ninety five or six foot one eighty nine. Um, he does. I mean, he's all legs though, so he might be six two. I'm t this this cat. He's either six one or six foot. I'm, I'm gonna give him six two. He's not. I saw a screenshot of him walking into a bank. <laughs> you know, right there beside the little meter. On it's the, the wall. socks that trick you. <laughs> long yeah, socks. Long yeah. Socks. He's <laughs> like, uh, can I get some extra long socks? Makes me look taller. Yeah. Well, so it's tough to gauge how fast this guy really is. I don't think he's quite a burner, but he, he's got some solid speed to his Good game. Good enough like, speed, uh, but not, doesn't doesn't make me like. He's not a guy that I think can rely on just being so fast that he's just a vertical burner. Oh, definitely not down the field. Uh, but he is a, again revered as a solid route runner, and and you can see that in his game. Yeah. Another, for, for a guy that's returning kicks. He's not scaring the defense with his speed, but the combination... The field vision. Right. The combination of his change of pace, the combination of his vision and ability to see things opening up in front of him, and then now his route running makes him hard to defend. He's not scaring you with his speed for sure, but he's the combination of everything he brings to the table, the defender's like, I don't know what this dude's about to do. Yeah, well, no, it's well, like, true. They classify him as a really having a, a quite a diverse route tree. Um, watching, I didn't see that. Watching all the tape that you can find on him, it's it's mostly a bunch of comebacks and, and out and routes. outs and then some vertical, some vertical shots, corners. I think yeah. Well, a, a really good part of his game is that either post or corner that he runs, and he'll either fake the opposite he's got a of solid what he's fake. doing. It, his and fake is solid. It's he it's, it's crisp. It's, it's hardly any momentum lost in what he's doing, and it's just a it's a very quick jab inside or jab outside and then explosion on the rest of the route and that's he, stutter he wins, and go he wins well with that play either to the corner or the post or maybe even a little bit more of, of a straight down the field uh go route kind of deal but with that little kick inside or outside he, he's very efficient with that and hardly loses any speed and uh that that's one thing i definitely noticed i agree with that game. and it like on that break like you said that fake his to me, his arms are all over the place. Mid conversation pop right there. I like it. His <laughs> arms are heavy. all over the place. It's like a perfect camouflage for what he's really doing. Like it's almost like a head fake on a cut, but it's his arms are like yeah. he his arms are flailing while he's running his routes. And then so in addition to that, his solid body control. So like, yeah, when he fakes that post or fakes that corner and goes the opposite direction, the wide the defender is basically just I know you're about to make a move I just don't know which way you're going and oh you faked me that way and now you went this way it's he's he he does he does make some defenders look silly and it's it's he's just got he's got solid fakes yeah he, yeah he, I like his bag he of sells tricks. it he's very fluid he's and I like his he's got a whole bag of moves to 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 gain uh, a little bit of separation maybe for his lack of true top end speed right I mean but. Uh, 
even though he has a, maybe not the true true top end speed, but he does he does get up on the def- defenders in a hurry. Yeah, he's pressing he them up, pretty well. He eats up the cushion right. well, which is a, a big factor in route. Gets running. those legs, but he's all legs. Gets pretty those fast, moving. pretty fast off the line of scrimmage as Sucks. well. He's got good hip hip sinkage. You hear yeah. you hear announcers even saying that. You see him break down the routes and well, he sunk his hips here and in and, and the the double move. You, you see him make defenders fall down. Sure. Um, it, so, it's pretty much the same move he puts on dudes every time. It's that stutter yeah. and go to get that outside leverage. Um, but, I mean, the change of direction is pretty good, like you guys mentioned. He's a long strider. He can make the, the wow one-handed catch while his other arm is being held. I feel like he's fairly decent in contested catches. Sometimes, I don't know, we kind of went back and forth on on the strength of his hands. You I think, see him I think drop okay. some. I think it's okay. It's really highlighted in his draft profile. Like, he's a stick-and-stay natural right. pass catcher. I don't. I you don't could, necessarily see that. I see that. some drops here and there, and I see some balls knocked out of his hands here or there. And to highlight that, it to me is like, what are you talking about? I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I don't. I don't. And they say his concentration and traffic is great. Like I also don't really see that. Um, I, mean, I do I don't like think, him going I don't think over the drops, middle of the field. I don't think he's like a, he has terrible hands by any means. But to for that for that to be a highlight of his, right. it was. Yeah, I was I, taken I, aback by that. That's funny. I I have. Um, written down that his finesse moves with a tough mindset are super solid but i didn't see strong vice grip hands but he doesn't necessarily have to have them because he's creating separation and he doesn't have he's not fighting that contested catch on most of his routes where he's run a good route and the quarterback puts a good ball out there because he's got space where he could just grab it and not have to necessarily vice it he doesn't have to des brian it away from somebody a lot of a lot of wide open catches on those like a lot of deep like intermediate, not deep outs, intermediate outs mm-hmm. and kind of quick comebacks are a lot of what his tape makes up. And then there's some of that vertical game in there. Um, but a lot of the times he's just wide open in a big space in a zone, Pac-12 defense. Yeah. 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 There, I mean, but there are some sure, contested and, and catches he, that you can he highlight earned, and see. Well, just like you said with Kirk when they're talking about busted coverages, he's earned some of those busted zone things of, of being great at running or around. Or just earned, look, yeah, earned a good, uh, earned a good a, cushion. Earned that separation. Excuse me. Earned that separation for a nice easy catch. He right. earned that easy catch so he didn't have to fight off the defender at the top of the route or the bottom of the route if he's coming back or wherever because he earned it. Um, but I, Jay Way mentioned hip sinkage and it made me think. I was watching some video on this guy and – I switched windows and wasn't paying attention for a second and some vi- other videos started automatically playing and I, and I don't really, I didn't think about it to say this. So I'm saying it now. So I don't have his perfect name, but it was like the who dat somebody video breakdown guy where he puts a little video of himself in the corner while mm-hmm. he's talking. And that was the first video I've ever seen of him do, doing anybody. And he had a, he, he was stopping the tape, slowing it down, showing you stuff and drawing stuff on the screen. I thought he did a really good job. I didn't agree with everything he said, but some of the things he said I thought was point on, spot on. And one of the things he just highlighted was uh, a, basically a double move like Jay Wayne was talking about where he went up and before he faked out, he dropped those hips real well and the dude froze the frame and showed you what was going on and then he broke out and he changed directions again and created some good separation. If I knew the guy's name, I'd bring it out a little better than that, but you could probably find it. But anyway... That Pettis's change of direction is route he's, running. He's very, definitely he's very fluid. Definitely something that he, you know, something that's going to help translate him into the next level of being able to get on the field. I would it, imagine he'd have a solid three cone drill if, if he doesn't he participate. In right, one. he doesn't miss any steps or miss any. Like he's he's very quick in in all the movements that he does. He doesn't waste much movement. He's very he is very yeah, fluid. Good, well, well, well put. And this guy is is versatile, if in nothing yeah. else. Every single play, he's at a different place on the line of scrimmage. Like he plays out wide, he plays in the slot. He's all over the place. They send him in motion. Like he's he you really if they're not highlighting him well, you have to search and try and find where he is because he's not just on the right side of the formation. He's all over the place. Yeah. Um. And 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 then he's great after the catch. I mean that, that's shown in his, in his right. return ability. You got you just got to give him in, in a Christian Kirk kind of similar situation where you can kind of get him more in that kind of punt return field vision mode. You just yeah. get the ball in his hands with some space and maybe give him an opportunity to set up his blockers and do his thing. Oh no, well like that's just what Jay Wayne said when we first got started about his punt return and the blockers and the the excitedness of the entire other ten people on the field with him. And when you if you watch that. That video of all nine punt returns for the NCAA record, that's what they were – some of the – you could hear some of the play-by-play guys saying in the background was like these guys – you know, 
they talk about it. The special teams unit talks about like every time this guy catches the punt, we got a chance to score. So they they know they're efforting together. Right. Those other side, those other ten people are working together. They the blocks are following him downfield, and like you said, he can set them up. And with their attempting to try to, you know, not that every every special teams doesn't they don't want to get back a punt, but there's a morale boost in every different situation in all different types of sports. And when you got a guy that back there that can, you know, make it happen, everybody's like, all right, well, this block is actually worth it, even though it's farther away from the play than normally it would even matter. And so translating to the NFL as a pure week one starting wide receiver, probably not necessarily for Pettis, but the the kick returning i believe will get him will 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 put him on the field as a rookie and then he well, works sure. his way up from there and if if he's if he's a solid effort guy and uh, and getting in there and with the playbook and then maybe there's an injury in front of him potentially dante pettis is on the field earlier than i believe he probably will be yeah I th- I'm, it's something that we always like and always talk about is you know a player's ability to return punts and special teams and all that kind of stuff to get him opportunities to be on the field and opportunities to score to gain him more opportunities. So that's, that's something that you always love and it can get Dante Pettis on the field. Uh, but I, I, I think I kind of just worry about a little bit of this guy's role and, and the fantasy points that will come where and where they'll come from with Dante Pettis. Like I, I just, I don't see him as a guy that I really now, maybe he is in that third round again, like you were talking with Dion King. 37. And then, that's then, I, then I don't really have a problem pick, taking averaging him pick four, one right now. at all. Like I'm, I'm yeah. fine with putting him on my team, but like, I'm sliding him way back there because I just, you know, I, I just, I don't know where the fantasy points. I don't think he, his game to me right now when I turn it on doesn't like, like when you, when I turn on Equinemius or any of those other guys we talked about before him or even Deion Kane, like I see a huge ceiling with Deion Kane. I just don't know where the ceiling is with, with Pettis. Like I like his game and I like the punt returning and all that kind of stuff. I just worry about like, how he's going to earn a role as a receiver like he just he just seems like he's going to be kind of average as to me when i turn on he just looks like an average nfl receiver no doubt but at the same time if he was to fall in the right system sure sure uh, you sure. know if he was to fall in the right system a la like a uh west welker wasn't west welker until Belichick got his hands on him you know somebody like that you could see a future for, and that's what I just said a minute ago. Like it's going to take maybe an injury puts him on the field earlier than what you would think. This guy's not going to walk into the gym or walk into the, the, the building week one after, you know, the draft and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting on Sunday. Right. You know what I mean? He's that's not, that's not how he's, his profile is not going to break down for, for him. He's not going to be an early pick to, to me. It's no, definitely not. And to me, like we were taught, we were talking about safety and home run cuts and all sure. that kind of stuff. Like, he just doesn't fall into any of those categories for me. Right. I don't think he's safe, and I don't really think he's a home run cut. Right. So, like, it's it's yeah. hard for me to but in justify the right spot, the pick. He could have a great future. Sh- sure, yeah. and so could anybody in this draft. Yeah, yeah. solid. It's a solid draft class, and I get it. There's not a lot. That, and that, I could be dead wrong. I like his route running. I, I don't. I'm not hating on the kid at all. I just, I, I just nothing pop. Like when I, when I get put on the tape and I watch, start watching guys. It's either like, oh, I like this guy, right. or I don't like this guy right. because of what I see in the potential and 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 all that. Like he just doesn't to me. Does he doesn't give me the feeling of, oh, I can't wait to put this guy on my team. I hope this keeps quiet because he's above average and exactly. nobody's talking about how above average he is. I know some people differ, yeah. and some people have him as the number one prospect in the draft. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I agree with you that there's not a ton of flashiness. There's not a ton of, of pop to his game you have to you have to sit there and watch through several games and then you'll see some you'll see some flashes there's some flashes but for it's not sure. consistent enough but the crispness of the route running and, and I think there's solid hands and and the efforting is definitely not an issue like I one of the best things to watch about this dude is his block right solid blocker good point. Blocking, great point Jay Wayne busts off you know springs Gaskin for a bunch of big runs not that Gaskin needs much help well but if we're gonna sit here and talk about Washington in the tape you want to watch I mean Gaskin. You, you've been I've been watching all this Pettis tape and it's just Gaskin Gaskin Ga- Gaskin's right. amazing right love this guy <laughs> he's so fun to watch like that's the special player on this team he's yeah. incredible but I mean a lot of those big runs you see Pettis is downfield yeah, no for sure block, his his dude rarely makes a tackle it's it's really good to see the, the the comeback to the ball he's he's decent on a scramble drill he's gonna come back and help his quarterback out Another knock, though, you don't always see him getting two feet in bounds. He doesn't have the two toe drag thing going on. There's a lot of college, a lot of college catches that won't count in the NFL that you see on the film. 
He does have good extension. He doesn't always unnecessarily leave the ground, which I like, but he doesn't always get those two feet in bounds. That's something he's going to have to work on. But I think I think he's going to put in the time and the effort. He's he's sure. renowned for his work well ethic. Well spoken, kid. He is. He's a little soft spoken though. They right. they, they question his some, alpha maleness, right. right? And whether or not he can be that alpha male receiver, I don't think so. But he, he you know, he's he's definitely. A, a, you can't a, have too many alpha males on a team. True. That's true. true. But this kid, he comes from an athletic family. His father won four gold gloves as a center fielder, played 11 seasons in the major leagues. His cousin, Austin Pettis, played four years for the Rams. So he's in a family that knows how to be a professional sure, athlete sure. and take care of your body and do the things that are necessary from a, from a professional standpoint, which that, that's very appealing. And I think he's going to get on the field because of this punt returning sure. and blocking. He's got the intangibles. But, what, but to your point that you made a long time ago, like I don't know – how much of that is going to translate to fantasy points? But well, I mean, if we're he talking, he could be a four, really good player for a team. Right. Yeah, I just don't know That's if he's right. going to equate. I think to you my, have a career, but at four one, yeah, but you know, I, I mean, fourth round wide receiver here. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, there's. I mean, like, how how in the world did Danny Amendola ever help anybody's fantasy team? You know, it happened. Oh, well, he helped but, me that fantasy team last year. Me too. <laughs> so, but it, like sometimes a guy's the sum of his parts. Instead of just having that big uh, that bully factor on one thing, he does very very well. Right, and like. So he's obviously he's a career punt return leader for the NCAA. His kickoffs are right there with it, with maybe five touchdowns, nine nine punt returns. So he's obviously really really good with the ball in his hands, with looking at the field in front of him. The his league needs Cordell Patterson. His right, his vision is elite because if it wasn't, he wouldn't be getting those types of plays. Right. So his vi- he's got elite vision with the ball in his hands, and if you add that with the route running. And add that with the right team, the right spot, the right system. This guy's got a good – he might have a really good future, but when you're talking about your fantasy football team, you have to play in the odds. And like y'all are saying here, I completely agree – it's, it may not ever happen for your fantasy team with with this guy on your right. team. You know, I mean, it may not I, ever happen, but it could be really good. And it, if it's sure, but that's just, but Chris Brow running in solid hands, you know, is, it could evolve. It, yeah, that's a nice thing to have. It's a nice piece. Great to the building puzzle. blocks. It's a great building great block. Building but blocks. I mean, there's just. It, uh, almost, gotta fill almost out. any gotta of these expand. players in this draft or later round picks in the draft or later round picks in any draft like you know it's just it's situational and sometimes it doesn't work out because of the scheme you go to or you know yeah you don't sure. get a chance or all that kind of stuff it might maybe it takes a couple of years for you to develop all, all those kind of things but what you're saying like i understand it but like that's anybody who's yeah. playing division one college football for the most part who's a who's a top air end athlete here yeah um, but so we we talked about um, you know Dion Kane and Mike Williams being you know Dion uh, Williams left and Dion Kane didn't quite fill into that alpha dog role. Well, you just had a guy in John Ross who was a first round pick in the league um, in 2016, I guess that was. Yeah, that was a 16. Well, no, season. he was drafted in 2017. But, it was but he 16 played season. 16, right? Yeah, he played and in 16. 17, Pettis is on his own. So in, in 16, John Ross has 81 catches for 1,100 yards and 17 touchdowns. Has a nice season. And Pettis has a great season as well. 53 catches, 822 yards, averages 15 a catch, has 15 touchdowns. So has a really nice season. But then the, not that much changes, at least as far. I don't know if the offensive line. I'm not have studied up on my Washington as much as right, I should be. Right. I don't know if the line maybe lost some players, but they didn't lose Gaskin. And they lost, but they did lose John Ross. We know they lost John Ross. And the numbers, they go up to 63 catches, 761, 12 yards average. So all that stuff basically goes down except for the amount of receptions that he got. And the touchdowns go to seven. So you would like to see a guy in this situation, you would like to see him be able to fill into that John Ross role and get those kind of targets and excel with them. Obviously, John Ross was a first-round draft pick, and he was a burner right. and all that kind of stuff. 4 But, again, just another kind of mm, fell into a, maybe a little bit more of mediocrity and average. Mm-hmm. Uh, once he became the guy. Once he became the guy. With the same is, quarterback. But this is why he's not being drafted exactly. in, in the, the top. first round. Right. And yeah, when you're others. the guy, you see the best defender every play, too. Right. So All right, well... Does that do it for Dante Pettis? You yeah. So I mean, else? let's. Well, I mean, let's. We. You got. Where do you? We just. We're basically at ten now. Yeah. And we've we've walked through five. We got Kirk at five. We got Miller at six. We have ESB at seven. You have Kane at seven, basically. So Pettis has fallen in 
in line here. That beer's really coming up, huh? Yeah, I just had a burp. <laughs> I mean, Gallup. I got to take Gallup. So you are right. You are right. I we I, we cut out Gallup in this conversation, and I and I believe maybe I maybe I put give Gallup the nod over ESB. Yeah. Just out of just, I feel like Gallup's Safeness? pretty safe as well. I'm taking the guy growing into the six five frame. That's fine. It's hard to argue with that. Sure, it yeah. is very hard. hard. We made a nice case for him, I suppose. People sure. like him. There's there's a lot to like around there, but Gallup's Name just cachet. really good at everything. Yeah. Um. So, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I said I have firmly ESB at seven. I'm going ESB at eight. Okay. Kane at nine. Pettis at ten. Out of the guys we've broken down. Yeah. Where I'm there. I think I've I've done some further analysis on some other guys. I think that. I think I'd probably have to put Traquan Smith up in here above Pettis. Um, I think he's got a little bit more explosive ability. I don't want to speak too much on it because I'm not prepared to, but, I mean, that guy is, is definitely deserves uh, a, a conversation in, in top ten. Yeah, and it's uh, given everything we we just kind of talked about about Pettis here, I'm going to take a swing for the fence on a, on a 6'5", 228 Alden Tate. Before I slow grab. forty, slow forty. That's all right. I, there's Kelvin. Audit Tate's like the opposite of Brown. Like yeah. they're the same size and height, but Brown's fast, but can't post up. But and Tate, Tate can post up a, like he, a mofo. He could be a Kelvin Benjamin or something like that, and or, I could, I could take touchdowns. Oh, yeah, like I mean, I like Tate. I like Tate. I liked just, him a lot before the combine in the net, and then nobody likes him now because he ran a slow. This is what happens with my, guys like Michael Gallup, though. You're just you're, you get knocked for just being good across the board right, and not right. really great at anything. He's we, average at everything. We forgot it. We I, I forgot to even put him in this ranking because I wasn't even thinking yeah. about it. But he's he, a really good receiver. In my but, opinion, he does, it probably deserves to be six or seven there, and I'm going to put him at seven. I'll put ESB at eight, Kane at nine, Pettis at ten. Yeah, I think I'll flop Kane just because I got to, but I, I, can't your blame boy. I can't blame you. But Pettis is definitely a 10 for me overall. Out of I mean, the guys we broke down. Right, and I tried to defend I him, but I still have I think he would slide quite a bit more once I break down more guys. That's possible. Yeah, like, I that's think, fair. I that's think fair. I could slide him to 11 just for Traquan off the rip. But All right. All right, we're going to close up shop. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed our rookie wide receiver breakdown. We all have individual Twitter handles. Tell us how you feel. At IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. You're listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. We also have a Twitter handle for that, at the FF Dynasty. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit subscribe. If you listen to the podcast, also hit subscribe. Go on iTunes, hit that five-star review. You can catch uh, catch us on any of your platforms of choice, Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, all of the above. Please and thank you. Till next time, you've been listening to the F. I've already said that. <laughs>